Here we are at Dolores Park, where people of all ages gather. And right over there is Mission High School, where the future of this community is learning and growing. Right now, we're on our way to the center of this community, Byright Market. Mr. Sam McGannum gave us a very detailed response to this question, and here it is in a nutshell. This community is an equilateral triangle, comprised of staff, guests, and vendors. No part of this triangle is more important than the other. Now, the one thing that connects all three groups in this triangle is food. The three types of food important to a community are local food, traditional food, and responsible food which is food that is organic, free trade, and free of slave labor. Also important to the community is the environment, which circles around the triangle, and Sam wants to support the people who are good for the environment and in turn good to us by being sure to provide all organic and all responsible food for their guests. At the heart of this, what keeps this community living is service. So how much bigger would you like Byron to get? And like, where do you see Byron say like 10 years from now? Uh, our goal is not to be big. Our goal is to continue to serve our community. Um, we might do one more ice cream shop, oh. but most likely the expansion is going to be expanding our farms. You know, I think we want to we want to grow. Um, we want to be able to grow more food and raise more animals. So you know, this year, you know, we're adding more cows to the farm, and we're going to add pigs to the farm, um, and we're going to start experimenting with animals. And so we'll probably. Yeah, that's probably where the major growth is going to be. Um, if you have like a suggestion, like what, in your opinion, is the best way to eat? I'm going to, I'm going to give you four questions that you should ask. Mm -hmm. If you can get the answer to those four questions, you can make an ethical decision. So, where was it grown? Right? Somebody might say, "I don't know," and then what do you do? Don't do it. <laughs> it's hard to make a decision when you don't know the answer to it. Right. Right. And so you're basically, if you decide to eat it, you know that you don't know the provenance of that food, where it's coming from, right? And so you're making a compromise as opposed to just eating it and not even thinking about it. So these four questions really, to me, are what raise consciousness. And then the minute you become conscious and begin to ask these questions and, and get answers, whether you like the answers or not like the answers, you're actually making an informed decision, right? right? You're making a decision that you're a part of as opposed to just being dumped on, right? right? So who grew it? Most people don't even know, you know, <laughs> that there was a farmer right. involved in feeding you, right? And, and to me this is like one of the fundamental things that's happened in our society. We forget that there's another human on the other end, somebody who had to work the land, somebody that had to raise that cow right. before we could get milk, before we can get a burger, right, before we can get a slice of tomato before we can get bread. Yeah. So this goes back to this responsibility issue, right? right? Was it grown with chemicals? Without. Was it grown with pesticides? Without. Right? Was it grown with slave labor? Without. Mm. And if you can get those answers, then you, again, you're able to make a decision. And then ultimately, <coughs> ultimately to me, the taste is, the, you know, it has to taste good. Of course. Right? And, and it's, it's incredible. I'm like, if you walk into a supermarket, and, and go to the person who's working in the produce department and say, do those apples taste good? What do you think he's going to say? Of course. I say yes, of course. Yeah. You think? 
this a, is this a random supermarket? Yeah. If you walked into like Albertsons or Safeway. I don't know. Do they have an answer to that? I don't know. I, I'd be really intrigued. You should try it because I, I, I do it all the time. And you know what the most common answer I get is? I'm not sure. I haven't tasted them. That's the most common answer. And every once in a while, you, you get somebody who says, oh yeah, they taste great. And they go, oh yeah, what do they taste like? And then you know what they say? And then you know what they say? Well, actually, they, you know, they just taste like a nice crispy apple. Because they don't know. Right. Right? And so to me, this is another really thing that helps you make a good decision. If you're buying food from somebody who knows what it tastes like, and who says, you know, if you went downstairs and, and, and went to one of the produce people and said, how do those apples taste? You know what they're going to do? They give us the right answer, or an accurate answer. You, you, know, you know what they're going to do? These apples? That's right. They're going to give you a taste of it. You know why? Because the best person to taste that food, if you're going to eat it, is you. you. Right. And that's, you know, to me, that's what I feel is, is, is really important. That... That if you want, if you're not sure and you want to taste something, they should be empowered to taste it, because then you're going to be able to make the best decision. You're going to be really happy with this, that decision, and and hopefully you've answered like enough questions that make you feel like you're making an ethical choice, but you're also getting something that's going to make you feel good, right?